screen. So, uh, hello everyone. Welcome to the Cell Networking Group. Now we will begin our uh, discuss. <coughs> so here I just uh, repeat the, the co-chair to make the uh, presentation for the cell uh, trash slide. First is not well, uh, sound manner. Uh, so uh, if you participate in the IT pro, uh, meeting, you agree to follow the IT process and the policies. And the one thing in mind, the, all, all of the process, the procedure of the IT meeting will be recorded. Uh, so, uh, and if you have some contribute, uh, include some patent, you should uh, disclose the fact. Here is uh, uh, our status of the uh, working group. So we have adopted two documents for the problem statement. And until now, we have achieved the first milestone. Uh, now we are prepared for the next milestone. But before, uh, before we do uh, step forward to the uh, next step, we should, uh, according, our, according to our charter, we should uh, uh, initiate the discussion on the, in, within the working group to uh, confirm that the working group consensus, consensus that we have, uh, we can uh, uh, forward to the next uh, milestone. So we'll, we will initiate a discussion with the mail list after the meetings. Uh, if any, any person have our opinion or comment, uh, you can express on the working group list. And uh, uh, if there is no any other, um, uh, objection, we will move to the next uh, milestone that we will try to adopt the, the intro domain architecture document. Uh, now, uh, we are going to see there are more uh, solutions to uh, provide to, uh, to achieve the, to try to achieve the same, uh, 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 to uh, solve the same, same problems. We are encouraging more person and uh, more contribution to the our architecture and the solutions. Uh, our goal of this meeting uh, is also uh, is mainly focused on the uh, updated architecture document, and uh, mm, uh, we also want to hear uh, some opinion from the current cell measurement and the evaluation of the existing cell mechanism. Uh, I think this will help us to uh, refine the uh, architecture document and the solutions. Uh, so uh, we will have brief introduction for the solution. Um, uh, aimed for the intro and inter domain saving mechanism. And we, if the time permits, we will, uh, there are other topics, we will try to uh, give some time to, for them to make practice. <coughs> so uh, this is the draft agenda for, the, for this meeting. Uh, we will focus on the first five topics. Uh, and uh, after that, uh, uh, we will uh, dis uh, discuss the, uh, the proposed solutions. I think after the introduction of the solutions, we can uh, look back to the uh, problem segment and also the architecture document to try to refine all of them. Okay, that's all. Joe, do you have a So we, we, we've given a fair bit of time. This is Joel Halpern, co-chair of the working group with Ericsson. We've tried to give a fair bit of time for things which are central to the current state of the working group. Part of that is to let them, the, the people who've been doing the work present that, but part of that is to make sure there is time for you folks to go up to the mic and ask questions because discussion is the reason for having these face-to-face -face meetings. So please, as you see those presentations, engage. We're looking for discussion, not merely walking through the material. Thank you. So uh, now let's the first uh, presentation for the intro domain architectures. Just tell us when to move the slides. Okay. I can I can use it. Yes. Pull up. Yeah. Hmm? 
See? Oh, I have to tell it to share the slides. <clears throat> there. Use the share slide button. Share preloaded slides. Here. Should be, yeah. I just share this item. There, new deck is being shared. Okay. I think you can control, you can control it himself. Yeah. There, it does that. There you go. Okay, morning everyone. I'm Lan Chengqing from Tsinghua University. I'm going to introduce the latest version of intradermal source address validation SAMNET architecture. So before I introduce the latest version, let's have a quick review of the background. Intradermal SAM have two goals. The first goal is outbound traffic validation. It means Edge routers should block in legitimate packets coming from the ASA's intradomain subnets, which forward source addresses of other subnets. Their second goal is inbound traffic validation. It means border routers should block in legitimate packets coming from other ASA's, which forward internal source addresses. So in this figure, router one, router two, and router five should perform outbound SAF, and router three and router four should perform inbound SAF. The draft of intradomain SAF problem statement has analyzed the problems of existing intradomain SAF mechanisms and proposed five requirements of the new intradomain SAF solution. It means the new solution should support automatic updates and achieve more accurate validation, can work in incremental or partial deployment, and guaranteeing convergence and security. So the intradomain SAFNet architecture aims to achieve accurate SAF in an intradomain network by an automatic way. It aims to address the problems of existing intradomain SAV mechanisms and meet the requirements proposed in the draft of intradomain problem statement. In last ITF meeting, we introduced the version 03, and today I'm going to introduce the latest version 05. Here shows the main updates compared to version 03. Uh, specifically, in intradomain subnet architecture section, the latest version clarifies the content of sub-specific information and introduces the sub-rule generation process for edge routers and border routers, respectively. And in use cases section, the latest version uses the two use cases proposed in the draft of intradomain problem statement to illustrate that intradomain subnet can achieve more accurate staff and support automatic updates. Finally, it adds a new section to describe how intradomain subnet can meet the five requirements. The key idea of intradomain subnet architecture is to exchange self specific information among intradomain routers automatically and then to generate several rules in routers based on both self-specific information the routers receive and their local routing information in their FIBs or RIBs. An intradomain router can act as one or two rules. Uh, specifically, a router can act as source entity or validation entity, or both. The router acting as source entity will send its self-specific information to other routers. And the router acting as validation entity will receive self-specific information from other intradomain routers, and then generate several rules based on the self-specific 
self-specific information and its local routing information. So what is the self-specific information? It is specialized for self-rule generation. It can carry necessary information which can not be learned from local routing information, especially in asymmetric routing scenarios. So it can help generate accurate self-rules. For example, the self-specific information can contain the router's locally known source prefixes of its connected subnets, or the ownership or type of a source prefix, such as the source prefix is belonging to a single homed subnet or belonging to a multi homed subnet. So, to communicate self specific information among routers, a new mechanism, namely self specific information communication mechanism, is needed. This communication mechanism is used for building the communication channel and propagating self-specific information from source entity to validation entity. It can be a new protocol or an extension to an existing protocol. Although the architecture draft doesn't talk about the design of solution, it proposes two basic requirements. First, the communication mechanism must support automatic update in a timely manner so that the validation entity can update its several with the latest self-specific information and the local routing information. Secondly, for security reasons, the communication mechanism must conduct session authentication before it establishes the session between source entity and the validation entity. Routers acting as validation entity receives self-specific information from other intradomain routers. After that, the router will consolidate self-specific information it receives and its local routing information in the FIB or RIB to generate the self-rules. As mentioned above, in intradomain networks, edge routers and border routers have different goals. Edge routers generate several rules and perform outbound self. So they should obtain the complete source prefixes of each connected subnet based on the self specific information they receive and their local routing information. While border routers generate several rules and perform inbound self, so they should obtain internal source prefixes of the AS based on self-specific information and local route information. And this use case shows a scenario of outbound self at edge routers. This scenario has been described in the draft of intradomain problem statement. In this scenario, edge router one and edge router two only learn part of source prefixes of subnet one from local route information. So in this case, if the AS uses strict UIPF to perform outbound self, there can be improper block problems. But if the AS uses intradomain subnet, route one and router two can exchange their locally known source prefixes of subnet one. And then the two routers can obtain the complete source prefixes of subnet one, so they can achieve accurate and automatic outbound self. And this use case shows a scenario of inbound self at border routers. This scenario has also been described in the draft of intradomain problem statement. In this case, Border router three and router four should block inbound packets with source addresses of internal source prefixes. So if the AS uses ACL based self, 
it requires manual updates and it may have high operational overhead. And if the AS uses loose UIPF, there can be a large amount of improper permit problem. But if the AS uses intradomain cell net nav, router three and router four can obtain the complete internal source prefixes based on self-specific information sent by routers one, router two, and router five. And assume now subnet two has a new source prefix P3. In this case, router five will immediately send the updated self-specific information to other routers. And then router three and router four will know that prefix P3 is a new internal source prefix. Antoine, go ahead. We have a question on the queue, so Mike right there. Thank you for using the queue. A reminder to everybody to use the queue to put your questions in, and we'll make sure you get time. Thank uh, you. Global. I wasn't sure to wait until after the presentation, no. but I have a number, a number of questions. Um, first thing is, I don't think that it's correct that if you're using ACL-based SAP that it cannot be automated. Um, we do this already using RER data and, and uh, a, a lot of other things. We do it automatically. We have automated this. And it, it's not the manual updates that's the problem. The problem is that the RER data isn't validated. It's not cryptographically signed. That's the only issue that we have. It, the, 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 the manual updates, I know that a lot of operators still update prefix lists manually, but it's not necessary. You can automate this. The second thing, and I think, it, it, I don't know if it was this slide or the previous slides, what I fail to see is how you can have trust from your downstream AS authorized by that downstream AS. It's somebody else that needs to do, that needs to give you the permission to route something. Now that is information you can store uh, and, and cache uh, a layer up in the topology. Um, and once you have that cached, you know, everything downstream can change its routing or, you know, do asymmetric routing. So not announcing anything, uh, but still send you packets. Uh, and that doesn't change as often as the, as the routing should change. So I'm, I'm, I'm confused why we want to use, you know, the, 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 the BGP signaling. Okay. That for it sounds like you're getting into the next presentation. Exactly, yeah. That's the interdomain. You can come back, put yourself back on the queue when we're discussing interdomain to discuss that one. You're focusing on intradomain, but you may want to comment on the automated generation. Yeah. So for the first question, uh, so this is for the inbound cell, and you mean there may be an automatic tool can achieve this function, but existing ACL based cell needs manual, manual requirements, manual updates. And the one important thing is we want an automatic self solution to achieve both outbound self and inbound self simultaneously. This is our aim. And for the second question, uh, so we are talking about the intradomain cell, okay? So we usually consider the intradomain routers can be trusted, but we also make some security considerations later. So I will uh, introduce our security considerations later, okay? So the two use cases show that intradomain subnet can achieve more accurate validation and support automatic updates. Compared with UIPF-based self, the intradomain subnet can generate several rules based on both local route information and self-specific information. So it can generate more accurate several rules in asymmetric routing scenarios. And compared with its air-based self, it can generate several rules and exchange self-specific information automatically. And so it support automatic update. As for incremental or partial deployment, the, the intradomain subnet doesn't require all intradomain routers to deploy it. In other words, edge routers and border routers deploying intradomain subnet is enough. 
But even if partial edge routers and border routers deploy it, it can still block spoofing traffic. For example, for afterbound staff, as long as edge routers connected to the same subnet have exchanged self specific information, that subnet can be explicitly prevented from spoofing. And for inbound staff, if a border router only obtains partial internal source prefix, it can still block inbound packets which forge those prefixes. And when self specific information is missing, local route information can still be used to generate self loss. And moreover, if more intradomain routers deploy intradomain subnet, the intradomain network can gain more benefits because it can block more spoofing traffic. And to guarantee convergence, when self-specific information or local routing information the source entity must send the updated information to validation entity timely, and then validation entity must detect the changes and update several rules with the latest information. But the propagation speed of self-specific information is the main factor that can affect the convergence of several generation. If self-specific information and route information can be advertised to other routers in a similar way, the two kinds of information can have a similar propagation speed. But this depends on the design and the implementation of the new solution. And for security, so as mentioned above, when we are talking about intradomain architectures, we usually assume intradomain routers can be trusted. But in some unlikely cases, some routers may do harm to other routers within the same domain. So this draft proposes several threats, and these security threats should be considered when designing the new intradomain self solution. Okay, in summary, following this architecture, the new SAV solution can meet requirements proposed in the draft of intradomain problem statement. So the new solution can generate several in routers using both self specific information and the local route information. So it can meet the accurate validation requirement. And self specific information exchange is triggered automatically when network topology or prefix changes. So the new solution can meet the requirement of automatic update. And when the new solution is partially deployed in an intradomain network, it can still block spoofing traffic. So it can meet the requirement of incremental or partial deployment. And self-specific information and several rules can be updated in a timely manner if the network topology or prefix changes. So the new solution can guarantee convergence. And for security, this draft lists several possible secu security threats in an uh, intradomain network. And these security threats will be considered in the new self solution. And so the new solution can meet the requirement of security. Okay, thank you everyone. Any questions? Um, I will, since I don't see anybody on the queue. Oh, Su Yang, go ahead. Okay, uh, can you move Name to... and affiliation first, please. Okay. Um, okay, can you move to slide number eight? And state your name and affiliation for the microphone. <laughs> That's fine now, better now. Oh, oh sorry, uh, it's Xie Yin from ZTE. Uh, so uh, thank you for providing exa uh, examples of subspecific information uh, listed here. Uh, from this example, uh, we can find the source prefaces and the ownership uh, source prefix and the type of so source prefixes. Uh, but for the bullet one, uh, you, you describe that this information uh, 
uh, may can't be learned from uh, you know local routing information in in a symmetric routing scenario, right? Um, but from my perspective, uh, the source prefixes uh, and ownership of source prefix may uh, be learned through IGP protocol. So I don't think so. Uh, your co conclusion here. Uh, I would propose to make some uh, refinement uh, here. Uh, it's my first question. Uh, my second question is about the uh, uh, intro domain architecture you provided uh, in this draft. Uh, can you move to the next slide? So answer her questions and then and Antoine is next. Okay, uh, about uh, the architecture, uh, I think uh, you uh, describe it uh, from the uh, self-specific information processing uh, using one specific communication channel, right? Uh, so uh, from my perspective, the architecture is described from control plane uh, perspective. Um, but, uh, you know, we have discussed uh, the uh, data plane uh, solution clearly and uh, we have made a uh, conclusion on it. So I would propose uh, to end uh, um, some considerations on data plane architecture. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. So, Karen, I have a question. I'll respond. Yes. So, the current the current architecture mainly focuses on how to generate several in control plane, right? So, maybe we can add some data plane considerations in the next version. Thank you. And for the first question, I mean, the ownership of source prefix can also be learned through IGP, right? Yeah, so, but you still need a mechanism to recognize the two source prefix belong to a same single home or multi home subnet. And there also need some, such as an ID to recognize this information. And for other information such as routers locally known source prefixes and the type such as this prefix is a hidden prefix or is, is only used for any class prefix, this is a new information and we need a new mechanism to propagate this information to other routers. Okay. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, don't leave yet. There are a few more questions, but before Antoine, give me just one moment. Thank you. Um, I noted as I was thinking about your previous question that some of the questions are actually about the requirements and problem statement draft, which is really good. Bring those up on the list because if we have issues with those drafts, we need to know that and discuss that and determine whether the content is right. And if automating is not actually a gap, we need to fix the problems draft so it doesn't claim a gap that operators don't have. And with that, Antoine, please go ahead. Yes, just, just, just to confirm, uh, my previous remarks were indeed about, you know, intra-domain more, more than, uh, than intra-domain. For intra-domain, I don't see a trust issue. So yeah, well, we'll, just, we'll get just to that in a minute. to get the feedback. I shouldn't grab the mic. Yeah, uh, uh, so the question, you have mentioned the, there, are two, uh, there are two kind of uh, uh, router, the edge router and the border router, and they take a different action uh, and for the service back even, but in the, in the operator network, I think it is uh, not easy to dis distinguish the, the rule of the routers and the procedure of the router. So I think can we find some general uh, solution for both of these router. Uh, okay. Okay. Thank you. We will continue. And folks, remember to take yourselves off the queue after you've you've raised your question. One more from future way. I think for the those kind of specific information, there's no need for some session or communication channel. I think a simple way just to configure on the router for that prefix, and then you can just distribute to use IGP and done. 
whatever information you want, such as uh, any cast or hidden, whatever. I don't think it, there's a difference from the different type of prefix. You just want to block some prefix, right? In any case, if you need this specific information, you just configure on the router for that prefix, and then you distribute that, those information in IGP down. Simple. Yeah, the manual configuration may have high operational overhead, so we'd love to run automatically to achieve this function. Okay, we'll move on to the next presentation. Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. I'm Li Bing Liu from Zhongguan Chen Lab. Today, I will present the interdomain source address validation subnet architecture. OK, let's uh, reveal the background of the interdomain subnet architecture draft. Overall, interdomain subnet architecture aims to provide a comprehensive framework for developing new interdomain sub mechanisms. It aims at addressing the problems of existing interdomain sub mechanisms and meeting the requirements proposed in the interdomain sub net problem statement draft. Here is a summary of the historical versions. At the IETF 115 and 116 meetings, uh, we introduced version 00 and 01, respectively. At the last IETF meeting, we presented the version 03 and received many comments and the feedback from the meeting and the mailing list. Uh, based on the comments, we have updated two versions. Today, I will present the version 05 and mainly focus on the main updates. OK, let's reveal the comments on version 03 and our corresponding response. Uh, Rudiger suggested that we illustrate the content of some specific message. Our response in section 2 we have illustrated the content of some specific message, which is used to communicate the source prefix and their legitimate incoming interfaces to NTRS. And in section 6.1, we have illustrated it in detail with an example. Bing and CRAM commented that the source specific protocol should not be used to distribute the information for forwarding. Our response. Uh, first, we have refined the name of some specific protocol to the some specific information communication mechanism. It does not communicate forwarding information between AS. We have revised section 6.1 to illustrate that a some specific information communication mechanism is needed to communicate the source prefix and the their digit from the incoming interfaces. Jeff suggested that the draft should discuss what incremental means in deployment considerations. Our response in section eight, we have discussed what incremental deployment is, why incremental de deployment is needed to support, and how interdomain subnet can support it in the partial or incremental deployment considerations. Jeff also suggested that the draft should add the considerations for convergence and scalability. Our response, we have added section nine to discuss the convergence considerations, which discuss the interdomain subnet should guarantee convergence and the proposed suggestions about how to avoid the improper block and the reduce improper permit during the convergence process. Also, interdomain subnet should have high scalability to support internet, le internet level sub. Joe suggested that the draft need to distinguish between incremental deployment of support for the sub protocol and its information incremental deployment or acting on the sub information. Our response in section eight, we have distinguished the partial or incremental deployments of interdomain subnet architecture and the sub information sources. Siram commented, uh, commented that whether the sub specific message contains an AS pass. Our response, the South specific message does not contain the AS pass of the BGP NRI announcements. In sections two and 6.1, we have illustrated the South specific information, which contains the source prefix and their legitimate incoming interfaces to enter IS.
it's not paging. Oh, moving to the next slide. Uh, uh, our rule suggests that draft uh, should illustrate the subspecific information. And if existing protocol uh, is due to transmit the source information, it needed to note that its existing routing mechanism cannot be affected. Our response in section 6.1, we have illustrated the contents of subspecific information, which are different from the traditional routing or forwarding information. Also, we have illustrated that how interdomain subnet can obtain the subspecific information and communicate it between us. And the subspecific information communication mechanism may be needed to communicate the subspecific messages. And if it is implemented by extending an existing protocol, the protocol should not be affected. Eager suggested that the draft uh, should consider the dual use information, which is developed for SAW and non sau Our response in section five, we have added the discussion on sau specific information, general information, and dual use information. Indeed, the general information defined in the draft represents the information for both sau and non sau purpose and it can also be called dual-use information. Iga also suggests that uh, the draft makes a dis distinction between static general information and the dynamic general information. And it is more robust to use static general information uh, for discovering permissible paths. Also, our response in sections five and nine, we have made a distinction and added these considerations into the convergence considerations and suggested to use a stable gen, uh, general information during the convergence process of the self specific information. Okay, let's review the requirements for the new interdomain sound mechanisms. Uh, based on the comments from Bing and the Rudiger, uh, they have added two new requirements that are guaranteeing convergence and securing their uh, communicated self specific information. Uh, let's look at the summary of the main updates compared to version 03. Uh, we have revised design goals and the SAW information based sections. In the SAW information based section, we have refined the definitions of SAW specific information and general information. We have added the illustration for priority rankings of different SAW information sources and refined the examples in figures three and four and the relative descriptions. We have added a new SoundNet communication channel section and the new use cases section. We have revised partial or incremental deployment considerations, convergence considerations, and the security considerations. Uh, let, uh, let us look at the detailed updates of the interdomain SoundNet architecture. Basically, interdomain SoundNet generates SAW rules with the SAW specific information when it is available. This is because the self specific information is specifically designed to generate more accurate SAW rules than the information used in existing interdomain SAW mechanisms, such as the local routing information. In order to communicate the SAW specific information, a new SAW specific information communication mechanism would be developed. And it should deal with the route changes carefully to avoid false positives. During the stage of uh, partial or incremental deployment, when the south specific information is not available, interdomain sound net will generate south rules with the general information. Okay, uh, let's clarify the definitions of south specific information and the general information. Uh, the south specific information is designed specifically for south and it consists of the source prefix and the corresponding incoming interfaces to enter as. Uh, the general information refers to the information that is not originally designed for SAW, but can be used for source address validation, such as the uh, relationships between uh, prefix and the AS. Uh, the customer to provider relations in RPKI as part objects, and the local routing information in the RIPs and the FIPS. Compared to the dynamic general information, such as the information from the RIP, the stable general information, such as information from RPKI ROE and the ASPAR objects, is more authoritative and can generate more accurate sound rules to help avoid improper block, uh, especially for the convergence process. 
Okay, the South specific information communication mechanism defines how the South specific messages are used to communicate the South specific information between the SunNet agents in different AS. Uh, the figure below shows an illustration example for an AS which originates the South specific messages, such as AS1 here. Its SunNet agent puts its own source prefix and the corresponding incoming interfaces in the South specific messages, uh, such as the prefix P1 and the interface 2 or AS2, and the sends them to the corresponding AS, which performs out. For an AS which receives the South specific messages from other AS, such as AS2 here, its SunNet agent can pass their South specific messages and obtain their legitimate incoming interfaces for the source prefix of the origin AS. Uh, we further use an example to illustrate how the South specific information communication mechanism uh, to communi uh, communicate the South specific information between AS. The figure on the right uh, has four AS. And the AS1 is a customer AS or AS2 and AS3. And the AS2 and the AS3 are the customer AS or AS4. And prefix P1 and P4 are the prefix or S1 and S4 respectively. P4 is advertised to S2 and S3. And then S2 and S3 advertise it to S1. Then S1 selects the path S1, S2, and S4 as a path of the traffic with P4 as, as destination addresses. Uh, a plain note that only S1 and S4 have deployed their interdomain SoundNet. By using their South specific information communication mechanism, S1 can advertise its source prefix and their corresponding incoming interface to enter S4, such as P1 and S2, with the South specific message along the path S1, S2, and S4, uh, as shown by the green arrows. Sorry, uh, as shown by the blue arrows. After receiving their, uh, receiving their South specific message, S4 uh, can obtain that the legitimate traffic with S1's source prefix P1 as source addresses will come from S2 and arrive at the interface, uh, interface 1. Uh, they abstract their connections of communicating South specific information, obtaining general information, and obtaining the manual configurations, such as Young uh, command line interface, SoundNet operation management, and the inter-domain SoundNet provision to the South specific information channel, general information channel, and the management channel, respectively. Uh, the partial or incremental deployment of the inter-domain SoundNet architecture consists of the partial or uh, incremental deployment of the architecture itself and the partial or incremental deployment of the South information sources. And the, during the uh, incremental deployment of the South specific information communication mechanism, a SoundNet agent should easily form a logical connection with the SoundNet agents deployed in other areas. The connection can be established by manual configurations or an automatic neighbor discovery mechanism. Again, when the South specific information for some prefix are not available, the general information can be used to generate some rules for this prefix. To reduce the deployment risks, network operators can enable the block actions incrementally, uh, such as first sampling, then rate limiting, and finally adopting the blocking actions in the data plane. The con for the convergence considerations, the SoundNet agent should collect the South specific information and general information and consolidate them in a timely manner. For the convergence of South specific information, the SoundNet agent should learn to the South specific message to adapt to the route changes in a timely manner. For the general information, it relies on the convergence mechanism in existing routing protocols or RPKI. And the South specific information mechanism should also consider the following factors that may affect their uh, convergence, such as packet loss, network latency, and message processing latency. Also, stable general information, such as information from RPKI, RWA, and ASPA objects can be used to generate some rules 
during the convergence process of the subspecific information. For the security considerations, the security threats faced by the subspecific information communication mechanism can be characterized into two main aspects, session security threats, such as session identity impersonation and the session integrity destruction, content security threats, such as message alteration and the injection and the path deviation. If I may interject, MD5 is a bad example to use. There, there are more modern ones that are equivalent and we should reference them. D don't reference MD5. Oh, <laughs> minor, very minor point, but I didn't want to confuse other people. Keep Thank going. You. Thank you. In order to deal with existing uh, uh, security issues, existing secure mechanism can be used or a new security mechanism should be designed to secure the self-specific information. Yes, the digital security design of the self-specific information communication mechanism uh, is out of scope for this document. Okay, finally, the summary. Uh, let's, say, uh, let's say whether the interdomain subnet can meet the requirements. Uh, requirement one, improving validation accuracy over existing mechanism. The self-specific information can generate more accurate self-rules than the general information. Requirement two, working in incremental partial or partial deployment. The interdomain subnet can support uh, incremental or partial deployment. And when some subspecific information is not available, the general information can be used. Requirement three, guaranteeing convergence. The subnet agent should launch the self-specific messages to adapt to the route changes in a timely manner. Requirement four, uh, reducing operational overhead. Uh, the self specific information and the general information can be automatically collected through the subnet communication channels. Requirement five, communicating self specific information between AIs. And the self specific information communication mechanism is designed to communicate the information. Requirement six, securing the communicated self specific information. Uh, existing security mechanism can be used, or a new security mechanism can be designed. Uh, in some interdomain subnet can meet the requirements proposed in the interdomain subnet problem statement draft. Okay, many thanks to all these people for their valuable comments and feedback on this document. Uh, I'm looking forward to your comments. Thank you very much. Okay. Anybody who wishes to comment, please put yourself on the queue. And do feel free to comment either on this draft or the associated requirements and problems draft on the list. We welcome and encourage discussion on the list. Okay, with that, let's move to the next one. Thank you. Uh, I, 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 so let me uh, ask one question. I think uh, for the in, intra and interdomain, there we are um, lacking one component. Uh, for example, on the, uh, on the validator or the receiver receive the service back information, uh, we, uh, uh, there is no, no, no channel to authenticate the, uh, the information. So, um, you know, if the uh, sender uh, send the wrong information or invalid information, we should find the uh, should design a mechanism to authenticate the information. Uh, yes, that's a good question. Um, uh, I think it's about the security. So, so uh, uh, in the, uh, I think in the architecture, we should do some requirements for the, uh, uh, for, for, for guarantee the security of the self-specific information. So uh, maybe give some validation on the, uh, on the AS which receives the self-specific information or build or build, do some authentication for the self-specific information channel. Now I need to go to the right presentation. Yeah, oh, I can pass that please to him. Hey, Ming I have passed the uh, slide control to you. You can try. Can can control it yourself or not? Oh, what I say is not my presentation. I guess the sorry, sorry, sorry. Sorry. In a moment, yes. sorry. So I have to control? Okay. Yeah. Oh, no. There 
we go. Uh, there we go. Yeah, you can. Can, okay. can you control the slide now? Let's see. Okay. Yep. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is uh, Mi Qing Huang from Huawei. Uh, this topic is about uh, we want to introduce some kind of new uh, self capability from the data plan perspective. So, according to some feedback or suggestion we got based on the previous revision that we need to carefully to, to you know, choose our expression to avoid that, uh, get detailed about the data plan uh, solution design and implemented implementation. So this, here's, here we go, this is a new revision. And also we changed the title, title to general source address validation capability rather than the SAP table, which one maybe get some amplitudes. So here's the, some background. Uh, as we all know that the current tools we have in the wild is ba basically uh, more based on URPF and ACRS uh, sub, sub, uh, supplementary, right? And the URPF uh, that uh, in the close connect interface scenarios that we better use strike speak mode, but the URPF cannot do the uh, asymmet asymmetric routing scenarios. This is one uh, significant scenarios limitation uh, of URPF. And uh, for ACO, actually this is kind of, basically it's kind of reactive way, uh, tools we have, uh, basic, uh, more rely on the, you know, human expert maintenance or some kind of centralized sen uh, security center. Uh, and other situation is that the performance and scalability issue may be introduced by ACL. Uh, this is uh, another scenario limitation. The one more important uh, limitation is that we, based on current uh, capabilities that we more focused on the uh, outbound uh, filtering, which means the close connect interface scenarios. For the open connect interface scenarios, we don't have so many tools, just rely on the uh, URPF's loose mode or, you know, reactive ACL configuration. So this is uh, the limitation of the scenarios. The other thing is that we don't have many tools to do some more, you know, po policy application based on the uh, validation result. A current common practice, actually, we, we all know that the URPF are just silent drop the smooth back packets. We don't know what happened and who is the victims and who can gonna be uh, benefit uh, by this kind of validation. So the key is that all this limitation, I think is based on because currently we don't have the dedicated SAV tools. Uh, for, for example, a FIB is derived from, uh, your RPF is derived from FIB and ACL is for you know, more widely wider, you know, scenarios. It's not dedicated for self filtering. So based on this kind of back background, we'd like to uh, introduce a more modes for uh, self valid self uh, source address validation. Uh, we have two, you know, scenarios. One is closed connected scenarios, which means we can get a complete list of the source pre prefix, you know, uh, in this case, uh, mode one is suggested that uh, is suggested, which means interface-based source preface loud list mode is uh, suggested. Uh, in this case, we want to introduce the native source prefix based self rule rather than URPF uh, kind of fee-based rules. In this case, as mentioned before, yet we can. Re release the limitation of asymmetric, asymmetric uh, scenarios, right? Uh, this is uh, mode one. And the other two modes are based on the open connected scenarios. Uh, as mentioned before that, right now we don't have many tools for these two scenarios. So these scenarios, so mode two is kind of interface based source perfect block list. So which means we, some case, you know, the basic idea is that for open connected uh, interface, we don't have capability to collect all 
you know, source prefix. So what we should do, so right now we have one choice is that we know what kind of origin uh, source prefix by, by our own. So we may want to block some kind of uh, source prefix. The other way is that we may want to provide, you know, more native tools for, uh, for, you know, operation center to, you know, do more, you know, uh, configuration based on the source prefix block list. This is mode two. Mode three is a prefix based interface allow list. This kind of mode uh, works when we got a given source prefix that we know that some attack happened. So we want block from and allow some interface and block some other interface. So uh, this will be work, working uh, to especially good for prevent some DDoS, DDoS attack. Okay, this is uh, two scenarios and the three modes we want to introduce. Uh, the other kind of improve, improvement we want to introduce is that uh, more flexible traffic handling policies. So just mentioned that right now we are PF just silent drop the uh, disapproved dis traffic. So one thing we want to do is that the traffic control policy should be more flexible. We could, of course, we could discard, but we can also by doing permit, re-limit, or redirect all, all kind of actions, you know, because sometimes we, we, we want to do some tentative uh, protection or we want to just uh, by uh, open some kind of vis uh, visibility. So we need more uh, options to control the traffic. The other policy category is traffic monitoring. So uh, this policy could be optional. So one example is sampling. Right, we we can do net stream, net flow, uh, whatever is kind of sampling to get the traffic information to the uh, security center. That we 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 will be very helpful for the security center to uh, further give you know visibility and uh, better you know threat analysis and reaction. So in general. Uh, this summary, so because right now we don't have dedicated self tools. Uh, so one thing is that we want to introduce a source address based self rule and to do some kind of three, three mode, three kind of modes uh, validation. Uh, interface based uh, source prefix allow list, interface source uh, prefix based uh, block list and uh, source prefix based interface allow this. And uh, also to encourage operators to deploy a uh, set, we need you know, more policies for operators to choose how to handle the traffic, hand, uh, ha traffic and how to open the visibility and uh, more intelligence for you know, thread and analysis. Okay, that's all. Any comments? Thank you. We'll move on to the next presentation. As soon as he gets your deck on. And while this is being Start set up. I want to thank the folks for doing this work because measuring the real world underlying reality that we need to address, and then the next presentation, which will be simulations to try to compare solutions, are really useful and important input to our work. So, thank you. Thank you. Uh, hello, everyone. I'm uh, Shui Wang from uh, Zhong Gansun Lab. And uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, our large scale uh, measurement of uh, episodes spoofing on the internet. 
uh, first I will talk about uh, our measures to conduct the measurement and uh, analyze uh, our uh, measurement result and talk about uh, the next steps. Uh, actually, we use multiple uh, solutions to conduct uh, the measurement, and the first one is uh, a DNS proxy based uh, one. And uh, its key idea is uh, uh, that uh, DNS proxy fails to modify the source address when forwarding DNS requests or responses so that uh, the DNS response received by the client uh, comes from another IP instead of the DNS proxy. Uh, so in this way, we can know that uh, the network where the DNS proxy is located allows to send the packets uh, with forged source IP address. Uh, this this, uh, uh, so this uh, uh, solution is proposed in using Unix Security 14. And actually there are two cases. Uh, uh, and the first one is, uh, is about a DNS query and assume there is a DNS proxy in the target network and uh, we send a DNS query to the uh, DNS, uh, DNS proxy uh, and uh, when the DNS proxy receives a packet, it will forward, forward the query, but uh, uh, it will not change the source IP. So if the, if the uh, DNS query can be forwarded successfully, we can know that there is no uh, outbound cell is deployed uh, in the target network and uh, uh, in the second case is about uh, uh, DNS response. Uh, DNS proxy re receives the DNS response and forward uh, it uh, uh, without changing its source IP and uh, keeping the source IP as the resource uh, address. Uh, so we, we, we can also know that uh, uh, no OSAO is deployed in, uh, in the target network. Sorry, I can Okay, thank you. Uh, and the second solution is about the DNS resolver based uh, measurement. Its key idea is uh, uh, that I send a DNS request with a forged uh, source address to a DNS resolver in the target network. And uh, then we will, check, uh, we will check whether the authority of the server receives the DNS request. Uh, if, if the DNS request is received, we can know that the target network allows to receive packets uh, with forged uh, source IP address. Uh, okay, this is an example. Uh, uh, there is a DNS resolver in the target net in the target network uh, whose IP prefix is triple uh, uh, six and uh, uh, slash twenty four. Uh, we have a controlled scanner whose IP is uh, called eight, and uh, uh, we will send a DNS query to the uh, DNS pr DNS resolver. Uh, but we 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 spoof the the source IP as uh, uh, called six. And uh, if the DNS resolver receives uh, uh, the spoofed packets, uh, we know that uh, we know that, uh, and it will uh, forward the DNS query to uh, to the authoritative DNS server, which we controlled. So if we receive the DNS query, we know that the DNS resolver or uh, the network where DNS resolver located uh, have no uh, inbound cell. Uh, this solution is uh, uh, is proposed in PAM20. And the, the, for the third solution uh, is a uh, uh, SMPv6 based uh, measurement. Uh, its key idea is to uh, send the SMPv6 packets with the fault source address to the target network and uh, use the rate limiting mechanism of uh, SMPv6 as an observer to check whether the spoofed packets are received. Uh, if fewer SMPv6 response is received, the target network allows to uh, receive packets with the forged uh, source IP address. Uh, this is uh, suggested by RFC uh, 3443 uh, in order to limit the bandwidth and uh, forwarding, uh, forwarding cost incurred by originating SMPv6 error messages. Uh, IPv6 node must limit the rate of uh, SMPv6 error message it originates. Mm, for example, if uh, no rate limiting is performed uh, in the attack network, uh, we, we, uh, if we send uh, uh, 10 uh, is the SMP echo request to the server, then the server will respond to us with the 10 uh, SMP echo replies. But uh, if written limiting is uh, performed, uh, when we send uh, 100 uh, SMP echo, uh, echo re uh, request to the server uh, due to the written limiting, the server may respond to us only with uh, uh, 23 uh, SMP echo uh, replies. So. If the spoofed packets uh, reach the server, uh, it will consume the, the token bucket uh, of the server 
so we can use it uh, as an observer to check uh, whether uh, whether the spoof packets uh, have been has been received by the target server. Uh, this work is proposed uh, uh, in NDSS 23. Uh, there is also a baseline solution. Uh, it's a client-based measurement, and uh, its key idea is to deploy the client in the target network and uh, uh, then send packets uh, with the forwarded source address between the client and the controlled server. Uh, we have implemented uh, uh, several uh, software, uh, which named uh, uh, Xiaomi, uh, and it, uh, can, uh, it supports Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Uh, it can be accessed by uh, scanning this QR code. Uh, actually, uh, it works as follows. If the spoofed packets uh, sent from the client can be received by the server, then also it is not deployed. Uh, uh, similarly, uh, if the spoofed packets sent from the server can be received by the client, then also it is not deployed. Uh, this is a su summarize of the uh, um, measurement uh, uh, methods. Uh, Client-based is uh, uh, is uh, Kita Kita spoofer used, and uh, it supports uh, both uh, uh, inbound spoofing and outbound spoofing measurement. But the DNS proxy based uh, out only support the uh, outbound spoofing measurement. Uh, the other two support support the uh, uh, inbound spoofing measurement. Mm, both uh, DS resolver based and the client based uh, one uh, uh, can work in both IPv4 and the IPv6. Um, uh, we, we know that uh, SMPv6 based can only work in IPv6 because it needs to uh, uh, rely on uh, uh, rate limiting. Uh, and as far as we know, DS proxy based uh, only work in IPv4. Uh, as of uh, uh, SPOOF and uh, SPOOF, um, uh, DS proxy based. Uh, can only uh, identify the ASCs that uh, uh, allow IP source spoofing, but it, uh, it cannot identify the ASCs that, AS that uh, does not allow IP source spoofing, but the other three uh, can, can identify both spoofable and unspoofable. Uh, sure, uh, so, uh, so the inconsistency is, means uh, uh, the result of a different IP address of, uh, uh, in the same AS or the same IP prefix uh, are different. Uh, so uh, because uh, DNS proxy based uh, cannot identify as movable, so it cannot classify uh, into uh, inconsistent, but the other three can do it. Um, a client based uh, need a volunteer uh, in the target network to run the software, so it cannot be uh, used for a large scale, uh, large scale measurement, but the other uh, the other uh, the other three can be used for uh, to uh, uh, measurement uh, remotely, and uh, but the, but they uh, need have some requirements for target network uh, such as DNS proxy with bad implementation, uh, DNS resolver uh, or devices with SMP v6 rate limiting. Uh, next is our measurement result. Actually, we have uh, conducted the measurement for a few months and. Uh, uh, we published monthly the, the measurement results of outbound and inbound spoofing for both IPv4 and IPv6. Uh, you can visit uh, uh, at our site at our website for more details. Um, overall, the proportion of uh, inbound spoofing is much higher than outbound. Uh, for example, uh, the inbound spoofing ratio uh, in IPv4 and IPv6 uh, are close to 80%. But there is only 13% uh, 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 of uh, uh, IPv4, IPv4 outbound, outbound spoofing uh, in IPv4. Uh, here we calculated the outbound spoofing ratio uh, by comparing uh, the number of ASCs uh, where the destination IP of the DNS request and the source IP of the DNS responses are in different uh, slash 24 prefixes uh, to the number of ASCs that have responding DNS proxies. Uh, similarly, the inbound, uh, inbound spoofing ratio is uh, calculated by comparing the number of ASCs from uh, which our authoritative DNS can receive a DNS request with spoofing IP to the number of ASCs that have uh, responding DNS resolvers. Uh, we also show the number of spoofed IP prefixes and uh, ASCs in each country or region and uh, their aggregation results for each IR. Uh, we can see that the proportion of outbound spoofing ASCs in IPv4 is higher uh, in countries in Africa, Asia, and uh, South America. Uh, and uh, the proportion of inbound spoofing ASCs uh, in IPv6 is uh, more than 60% uh, uh, in all IRs. Uh, 
Actually, uh, we also provide a, a detailed list uh, uh, of outbound, uh, outbound inbound spoofable assets in both IP4, IP4 and IPv6. Uh, we, we compare uh, the coverage of our data with KDAS buffer. Uh, uh, please note that the number in parentheses are for the networks that allow IP source spoofing. And uh, uh, due to ethical concerns, KDAS buffer does not publish uh, the information about uh, uh, inbound spoofing for a single network. Uh, but uh, considering that uh, the client supports both inbound and outbound measurement, so the coverage of inbound uh, measurement I can refer to its outbound one. Uh, for the total results, uh, we, we have found uh, uh, more than uh, 8,000 ASCs that allow IP source spoofing, uh, outbound spoofing in IPv4. Uh, which is uh, three times of uh, uh, KDAS buffer. And uh, we have found uh, uh, more than uh, uh, 36,000 uh, ASCs that allow uh, IPv4 inbound spoofing, uh, which is uh, almost half of the total AS in the world. And uh, uh, for the single master result, we, ha uh, we have found uh, more than 6,000 uh, ASCs uh, uh, that allow IPv4 outbound spoofing uh, in, in, in last month, uh, but only uh, 100 ASCs is found in KDAS buffer. And uh, uh, next is uh, we also compare the uh, top 20 countries uh, of our data in KDAS buffer. Uh, here we only compare the uh, IPv4 outbound spoofing result and uh, uh, in order to reduce the bears caused by a few samples, only countries uh, with more than 100 scanned ASCs are considered in our data and uh, uh, more than 10 assets are considered in KDAS buffer data. Uh, we can see that uh, the, 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 the data of uh, the result of our data and uh, KDAS buffer is totally different. Uh, we, uh, the, the country appeared in our, in our data, but not uh, in KDAS buffer uh, marked in bold. Uh, uh, actually, uh, our data has more has a, has a high coverage. For, for example, uh, we have we have scanned uh, uh, 1,800 uh, uh, ASCs uh, in our data uh, in Indo Indonesia, uh, but uh, uh, only 18 uh, ASCs were, were scanned in KDAS buffer. <coughs> okay, uh, next. Uh, 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 in the next steps, uh, we, we will improve uh, some client software and uh, its, uh, its deployment will make it more uh, easier uh, for use, uh, such as uh, GUI uh, one click for measurement. And we will try to explore how to deploy some clients through crowdsourcing. Uh, and uh, uh, more important, uh, collab collaborators are welcome to join us in promoting the Xiaomi client, uh, which supports fangrain spoofing uh, measurement and we'll uh, explore how to conduct a uh, large scale measurement for uh, IPv4, uh, IPv6 outbound spoofing and uh, explore the misbehaving DNS proxy in more detail and uh, differentiate between bad DNS proxy and the complicated but normal DNS uh, system um, and more. Okay, uh, I will stop here for hey, comments. Antoine? Thank you very much this, for this work. Um, I think it will be very good when we know how to actually test whether or not connections are spoofable or not. I have one question. Um, comparing your measurement method to, for example, what the Kaida spoofer is doing, how do you identify the culprit AS when the client is actually multi-homed? Uh, because with the Kaidar spoofer, we have the experience that people that multi-home their network send the legitimate traffic over one link and the spoofed traffic over another link. And Kaida blames link one to have not implemented source address validation. While well, that is actually not true. So how do you differ, how do you define the culprit AS or the culprit IP uh, where the spoofed traffic is coming from? Uh, actually. Actually, we, we, we uh, just do it uh, uh, in our best, uh, in our best uh, because we cannot, uh, as we have said before, we cannot identify uh, the AS, the AS is, uh, that uh, does not allow IP source spoofing. We, are, we, we can only find some, uh, uh, IP, uh, some ASs that, uh, that allow uh, 
uh, IP source spoofing. Um, what I mean is that uh, our result is actually is part of the ground truth. We, we only find the the, the ASCs that ASCs that allow IP source spoofing. IP source spoofing. Yeah, because right. you cannot trace back a spoofed address, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we will okay, the next uh, okay. Usually. Okay, next. Oh, hello, everyone. My name is uh, Li Chen. I'm from Zhongguan Chen Laboratory. And today I'm going to present our current progress with the uh, South Open Playground. Basically, we uh, implemented and emulated nice South mechanisms. Uh, so let's go over the motivations first. Uh, why why do we do this? Uh, we do this uh, for three reasons. We uh, ho hopefully we can uh, use this open source implementation to increase the community understanding by seeing the uh, sub mechanisms in action. And secondly, we want to have a set of open source implementations of existing sub mechanisms. And lastly, we want to. Uh, uh, review the performance characteristics of different sub mechanisms, uh, so that both the we hope that the, both the uh, operators and the vendors can benefit. Uh, in summary, uh, sub op provides an open platform to implement and emulate different sub mechanisms, and this is our hope. And uh, let's uh, let's go into the current progress of uh, sub mechanisms. Uh, the arch architecture of the uh, sub op is uh, simple. We basically have a sub agent. We have an underlying routing instance, and uh, we use IP tables uh, to implement the sub tables. And uh, to today we have implemented nine sub mechanisms, including five uh, URPF based solutions uh, as well as BarSaf. Uh, Passport is a academic solution which uh, embeds a cryptographic signature in each of the the packets, the headers, and the uh, uh, routers in the past will examine the uh, header to perform SAF. And we also implemented DSAF and EDSAF. And DSAF is proposed in uh, IETF 113 above session, which leads to the current working group that we're working on. And the EDSAF is our enhanced version. And uh, I believe the audience here are more familiar with uh, URPF-based solutions. So I will basically uh, go more details into uh, uh, DSAF and EDSAF. So for DSAF, uh, it actually features hop-by-hop uh, -hop propagation of sub-specific information uh, so that the source, informa source prefix information is uh, propagated through all possible forwarding paths. And the uh, detailed uh, explanation of the sub-mechanism is, uh, uh, is uh, uh, in this link. And uh, for EDSAF, we actually make a three improvement upon DSAF. Uh, first is the decoupling of the control and data channels. Uh, the DSAF uses the uh, underlying BGP routers, uh, uh, BGP connections to its neighbors to, to pro propagate the uh, sub-specific sub information. And this actually heavily burdens the uh, underlying uh, routing instance uh, and reduces uh, packet per second uh, processing power. Uh, what we what we want to do here is that we want to uh, make the uh, BGP ch channel uh, solely for the control purposes. Uh, what do I mean by control purposes? It's basically uh, doing uh, uh, neighbor discovery as well as establishing the data transfer uh, communication channels uh, between the sub agents. And uh, the second innovation we do is that we use the AS number to replace the source prefixes so that we can uh, re reduce the bandwidth requirements. Uh, of the data transfer of uh, uh, sub-specific information. But in this process, we also altered a little bit the uh, definition of what we mean by sub-specific information. And uh, lastly is that we build a, a neighbor discovery mechanism uh, in partial deployment scenarios so that uh, the, uh, AS, uh, the, the AS's uh, sub-agents can uh, discover, uh, discover each other and establish uh, communication channels. So uh, let's go to the performances of different sub mechanisms. And before that, we sh need to uh, explain our emulation setup. Uh, here we list all the uh, hardware specifications uh, as well as the uh, software versions uh, of uh, current, our current sub op implementation. And we intend to measure four things, uh, four aspects of the performance. One is the uh, validation accuracy. 
uh, the control and data plane performances and the scalability of the self uh, implementation. And uh, in the experiments, we mostly use uh, topologies with uh, 50 ASs, and these uh, topologies are sampled from the real internet topology. And uh, for scalability experiments, we'll increase this, this number uh, to as high as possible. Okay, let's first look at the validation accuracy. Uh, here in this table, we listed uh, nine sound mechanisms and their respective uh, performance in terms of validation uh, in three scenarios. And these three scenarios are defined in our problem statement draft, interdomain problem statement draft. And we can see that in the symmetric routing scenario, both the loose URPF and URPF, EFP URPF with algorithm B uh, actually improperly per, uh, permits a spoofing traffic. And uh, in the other two scenarios, the uh, no export and the direct server return, uh, uh, all uh, all uh, sub mechanism have some kind of problem, except for passport, DSAF, and EDSAF. And uh, in general, we believe that this confirms with our analysis in the problem statement draft. And uh, interested uh, audience can refer to that draft to see what actually happened for each of these uh, uh, sub mechanisms. Uh, next, next we move on to the control plane performance. Uh, for control plane performance, we basically measure the packet per second uh, processing power of the uh, throughput of the uh, uh, BGP routing instance uh, in in SAFOP. and we uh, increase the uh, and we vary the proportion of SAF messages uh, out of all the messages that the BGP uh, uh, routing instance receives or processed. And we increase this uh, number from, uh, we, we increase this percentage from 10% to almost 100%. Uh, we can see that uh, both uh, DSAF and EDSAF actually uh, decreases the uh, control plane performance, BGP uh, routing instance uh, performance uh, with the uh, increase of uh, SAF messages. Uh, but comparatively, EDSAF is 53% uh, faster than DSAF. And we believe this is mostly can be attributed to the uh, separation of the control and data channels. And uh, we actually want to propose a new design principle for the vendors to consider when they are implementing subnet, which is that uh, we should limit the negative impact of subnet to the uh, performances of the underlying routing uh, instances. And uh, we believe that the separation of the control and data plane is a good way to, to achieve that. And next, we move on to the data plane performance. Uh, we implement a traffic generation tool to generate spoofing traffic to test the uh, performance of different uh, sub mechanisms. And uh, here, uh, and we vary the uh, deployment ratios of different sub mechanisms. Uh, we can see that the passport is uh, uh, more than 500 times worse than ESAF or the, uh, e uh, DSAF or EDSAF, and this is because of these uh, per packet crypto uh, operations that need to be done by uh, by Passport. And we also find that the control plane forwarding performance of each of the sub mechanisms actually uh, decreases with the uh, increase of uh, deployment ratio. And we believe that this is because of the uh, enlargement of the uh, size of the uh, sub table. And we hope that the vendors can take this into account and uh, build better uh, table management or memory management uh, mechanisms for the data plane of SAFNET. Uh, finally, we look at the scalability of SAFOP. Uh, here, we vary the number of uh, ASs and measure the uh, experiment com completion time. Uh, the completion time is defined as the uh, all, as all the ASs having a blank SAF table uh, to all, uh, to all the ASs to the time that all the AS uh, have their SAF table filled and the, those tables have been converged. Uh, the key figures we hear is that uh, uh, with our current implementation, a server with 256 gig gigabytes of memory can run about uh, 200 containers running SAF op, and each container actually contains an AS. And uh, for EDSAF, a 200 AS topology will converge uh, within uh, in, in about 47 minutes. And basically, we believe that this is uh, uh, limited by compute and memory. And comp uh, compared with DSAF and EDSAF uh, shows a slowing, slower growth trend, uh, which uh, means that it has a better scalability. Uh, scalability. Uh, so in summary, uh, SAFOP continues to help the uh, completion of the working group charters. Uh, we, uh, we build and emulate different sub mechanisms and uh, we uh, also provide necessary utilities, for, for example, the interfaces with, with the RPKI infrastructure. Uh, and uh, these new utilities can these utilities can help us build new sub mechanisms. And finally, we uh, also 
uh, also emulated uh, some mechanisms in uh, relatively large scenarios uh, to reveal its performance uh, characteristics. Uh, hopefully, we will help the vendors and as well as the operators. Yes, uh, thank you, and that's all for my presentation. And I encourage everyone to join in this open source effort, and you can uh, uh, reach this uh, project uh, using this link. Thank you. Uh, Sri Ram NIST. Um, so can we go to your slide seven? Uh, Yep. So for uh, Barsa, uh, uh, for Barsa with no export, um, even if it is no export, if if you created the um, the right kind of uh, ASPAs uh, and the ROAs, uh, you, you can't you can't detect a no export uh, prefix uh, using BGP data. Uh, but if you have created the right kind of uh, ROAs and ASPA objects, uh, even no export is uh, it can be found in Barsa. So I'm wondering how you designed the experiment that 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 you are missing them. Uh, yes, the experiments are did by uh, building uh, Barsa as well as the uh, relative uh, uh, util utilities to get the ASPA objects as 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 well as the ROA objects. Uh, uh, we can we can go back and examine whether we have made some errors in the uh, experiment setup. But uh, this is currently what we get. Right. I, I mean, only way I can imagine that could happen is you selectively uh, chose not to create certain uh, aspas or rovers. Uh, otherwise, if you created uh, the aspas and rovers that are needed for the topology, uh, it you should not miss any of the prefixes. Uh, the, the experiment setups are, are okay. available online. It, uh, it is basically all, all open source. We can uh, go go back and examine this uh, setup later. Okay. Thank you, and thank, thank you for you. the work. Sriram, you may want to send more details to the list to help them validate, because it's important. We want the simulations to be actually checking what the different cases really do, not if, if, because we all make mistakes understanding each other's solutions. So if you can send some more details to the list, that would probably be about how to send the right, set up the right SPA, ASPAs and such like, that would probably be helpful. Sure, yeah, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, Sunil. Uh, you have mentioned the e, ED cell, uh, use the uh, separate control plane and the control channel data. Yeah. So, what uh, I want to ask, uh, uh, what kind of content is being transferred by the data channel? Uh, uh, as I understand uh, there are not many messages to transfer between the between nodes because uh, uh, all the information should be the control related information. So, why you divide the the channel into two kind of? Uh, basically, we want to do. Uh, uh, this this we do this mainly because of the uh, partial deployment scenarios where we have a lot of uh, neighbor discovery messages to be disseminated so that the staff agents can discover each other. So this is the control in the. Uh, in this the control. is what we mean by control channel. Uh, so what what, what kind of information being transferred in the data channel? The data channel only transfer the staff specific information. Basically, if we, would, if we do oh. not use the AS numbers, we just oh. use the, uh, this is because the large number of prefixes that need to be transferred uh, be between the sub agents, and this will burden the uh, BGP routing instance. We want to remove this and uh, establish a separate channel for that. Okay. Thank you. Okay. We're moving on to the discussion of the IGP extensions. Good morning, everyone. I'm Huai Mo from Future A. Today, I'm going to talk about the IGP extensions for injury domains SAF. IGP on every node will build its SAF based on link state database and uh, routing table. This uh, table will be sent to data plane and used to validate package. Basically, 
for each package received, if the source address of that package and the, the income interface is not in the any row of the survey table, that package will be dropped. So here we propose extensions to satisfy the requirement from a problem statement. So those requirements include fast convergence of a survey table on the dynamic route changes, accurate validation, and then backward compatible. So we will focus on the fast convergence. So our pro proposal, I think, is, is very fast. In general case, no extra sorted path first algorithm will be used. So in worst case, only one sorted path algorithm will run for this surface table. So let's look at the details. So this page shows how we build surface table for special case, which is one area. If every link in the area is symmetric, then we just copy routing table to the surface table. That's very fast. No extra ST sorted path algorithm is needed. But the, the table are the same, but the semantics is different. In the Safi table, the prefix is the source address of the package. The interface is the company interface of the package. So when there is a link which is not a symmetric, in this case, every node will build Safi table in three steps. At step one, we build a reverse sorted path tree. So this tree is from myself, node X, to the other node in the area. But I use the cost of link in reverse directions. At step two, we build the routing table using this reverse sorted path tree. So basically, for each prefix attached to a node Y, so we have a sorted path from X to load Y with a next hop. And then for each prefix attached to load Y, we just add that prefix and next hop interface to Y to the SAFI table. And then we're done. And then as soon as we have a reverse routing table, we just copy the content of the routing table to the SAFI table. And then we get the SAFI table. So this procedure will we'll get all the prefix in the SAFI table. We propose three options for the domain of, of prefix to be validated. So option one is all the prefix. Option two is the prefix attached to the ABR and the SBR. So in this case, at step two, we just consider Y is ASBR and the ABR, then we get an option two. Option three is that we only cons concern about the prefix we configured on some nodes. So in this case, at step two, we just consider node Y, and then this node Y has some prefix configured to be validated, and then we get the option three. So then let's look at the multiple area cases. So for multiple area cases, and then is a, I think it's a similar. So in generally, or basically, if every link in the domain is symmetric, and then we just uh, copy the routing table to the survey table for every node in any areas. So here we just give a uh, general procedures for every node in any area to build its survey table. So these are three, four steps. So at step one, we get an area sorted part tree. So this, uh, Area sorted for tree is for myself to the other node in, 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 the, in, in my area. If the link in this area is semantic, is a symmetric, and then we just use the existing sorted for tree for the routing table. Otherwise, we build a reverse sorted for tree from myself to the other nodes in, in the area. So that's step one. Step two, we extend this tree 
First, we add all the prefix to the tree, except for the summer prefix. So for summer prefix is from some areas, from any of the other areas. For example, here we give uh, area a, a prime. So for, th for those prefix, if the path from that prefix to, to the ABR is symmetric, and then we just reuse the part of the normal part of tr uh, sorted part tree from ABR to that, uh, uh, to that uh, summary prefix, and then we're done. And then step three and four is uh, similar to the last uh, uh, prefix page. And then we have the general case for building, sort of, for building subject table for every node in any area. So here we just, just propose uh, extensions in symbol. So if we s select uh, option three, and then we indicate the prefix use some flag, and then indicate that this prefix will be validated if we configure on some of a node. So another extension is that we distribute the reverse metric for the path between the ABR and the summary prefix. So this is only used when the path is not symmetric. If it is symmetric, don't distribute anything. Yeah, that's all. So we welcome comments. Hi, Huai Mo. It's Ngo Fang from the Zhongguan Chen Library in Beijing. Uh, this is the first time I learn your solution. And uh, I think this is a smart algorithm, but I still have several questions. The first one is about the, what's the scope of the source prefix in the sub rules build generated by your solution. And it's, it focuses on the source prefix of some device or the source prefix of the customer or the service. And the second question is about if the um, routing of the service is distributed by the another process of the same IGP type and or another type of IGP protocol or even the BGP, but it, it works a lot and how it works. And the third question is that about is this algorithm for the, of the ISPT uh, works in the situation of PPR. That's all. Yeah, regarding to your first question uh, about the range of uh, prefix we cover or to be validated, and then we propose three options. So first option is that we cover every prefix we can, we can get in the, in, in the domain. So the second option is that we only cover the prefix attached to ASPR and ABR. So the third option is that, so we can cover whatever you want if a customer configure on any node. So is that an answer your question? Um, by the RSPT? Calculated by the I RSPT. think we may need to take this in the next comment to the list. We're, at, we're way over time at this point. Okay, okay. Th thank you. I'd rather have more discussion, but we're short of time. Sorry. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, hi everyone, it's Xuyen from ZTE. Uh, so now I'll introduce our drafts about IGPPOI for intro to Okay. Next slide, does that work? There. Okay, uh, refer to the uh, intro domain problem uh, statement draft. Uh, there's intro domain requirements listed in the draft. So. To certify these requirements, we design the intro domain uh, sub method. Okay, uh, in this draft, we introduce a new terminology. It's about uh, prefix originated indicator. Um, this uh, indicator is about a uh, tag uh, used for AGP or BGP root source originated identification. Uh, so. Uh, it means that uh, the POI uh, can be used for um, 
uh, indication or identification for the prefix source, uh, location, or directionality. Okay. Uh, for the IGP cell method, uh, you can uh, find the figure in this slide. Uh, this figure shows an example for uh, multi-homing scenario. Uh, and in this uh, scenario, the access network, uh, which can be tagged with uh, POI1, and the access network can be considered as self-source entity. Uh, it uh, will send a source prefix uh, to its, uh, its upper uh, network. Uh, and uh, the edge router uh, for the upper network uh, can be considered as a validation entity. Uh, when the validation entity received uh, source prefixes from uh, some access network, uh, we we'll validate uh, the prefix uh, through uh, uh, verify uh, the prefix uh, is really mapped with uh, the right incoming interface. Uh, so the policy uh, is applied that uh, first uh, we need to en enable the uh, incoming interface uh, with POI policy uh, used for the prefix filtering uh, and validation. Uh, and second one is to validate the IGP root prefix. Uh, uh, as you know, uh, this uh, action is also related to, to the validation entity. Uh, and uh, in the validation entity, it will also generate uh, one extended prefix table. Uh, and this table will uh, include some specific information such as POI information. Uh, you know, this information can be uh, considered as an extension information to the source prefix. Uh, and the validation entity perform uh, source address filtering uh, and um, uh, take uh, some actions uh, you know, uh, make decisions uh, whether to uh, translate the, pa uh, the package or drop the package. And for the subtable uh, generation, uh, also we refer to the figure, uh, the validation uh, ER1 and ER2 uh, needs to have IGP neighbors. Uh, and the ER1 uh, will end, uh, you know, uh, the ER1 will receive the prefix uh, from the access network POI1, and ER2 receive the uh, prefix P2 uh, from the access network uh, POI1. Uh, when um, there's IGP neighbors between the ER1 and ER2, uh, ER1 will uh, advertise its route to ER2. And uh, similarly, ER2 uh, will advertise uh, its route, you know, prefix P2 to ER1. Uh, so at last, uh, the ER1 and ER2 will have a full uh, root table about uh, including P1 and P2. Um, so uh, when the validation entity um, validate the prefix uh, origination and find the uh, P1 and P2 prefix has the same uh, 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 prefix origination. So it will uh, make decision that uh, these two prefixes are from the same uh, uh, prefix origination. And the uh, origination, uh, if the origination network is uh, trusted may uh, so uh, the for the validation entity uh, ER1 and ER2 will generate uh, the full sum uh, table. Uh, for example, P1 will uh, and interface two and interface four and it's a uh, one laid incoming interface. And for the IGP uh, extensions, uh, we use TRV uh, format uh, to carry the POI information. And it's possible uh, extension uh, may 
for example, for two OSPF V2, uh, use, uh, we use OSPF V2 extended prefix to uh, to carry this information. Uh, and uh, for OSPF V3 and uh, it is V2 and V3. Uh, V6, we use this uh, sub tier way to carry the PLA information. Uh, for the next steps of this draft, uh, we would like to, uh, we have a plan to analyze uh, some possible uh, POI identification solution. Uh, uh, and uh, we also received comments from uh, IGIN. Uh, it's about uh, the existing RFC uh, 9084. It's about uh, OSPF V2 and V3 uh, extension to carry the source router ID. Uh, you know, the source router ID can be considered as uh, a method for the POI. And for the RFC 7794 is about it is uh, extensions to uh, also carry the source router ID information. Um, but uh, the, the, the difference uh, for uh, this draft with this existing RFCs, uh, the POI proposed in this draft is about a tag. Uh, this tag can be, uh, can uh, be used to uh, identify a network and can also be used to identify a router, only a router. So uh, I think maybe it, it, uh, it's more flexible. Um, okay, uh, comments and questions? So uh, I think we have uh, uh, top, uh, enough time. So we will move to the next priority. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, this draft is about BGP operations for interdomain SAM. Uh, it's from ZTE and CMCC. Uh, in this draft, we also create some new terminologies. Um, uh, I, I, I need to mention that um, this draft is about uh, to resolve the interdomain SAM. Um, different ways our last draft, uh, but we use similar method uh, to um, address uh, the cell in interdomain network and uh, in interdomain network. Uh, so in this draft, we uh, uh, create these four terminologies. Uh, the POI is the same as, uh, you know, the, the, the terminology defined in the interdomain draft. Uh, and prefix, root prefix, and incoming interface. Uh, this terminology is uh, mainly used for the subrule uh, generation. So it's related about it. Uh, the method consideration uh, for the BGP cell uh, method, uh, we, um, uh, we believe that uh, the a BGP AS interdomain networks may be managed by different operators. So uh, when we design the method, um, it's recommended to use local policy uh, to, to, to realize the source address validation. And the local policy uh, is applied to the ASBR. Uh, and for the uh, requirements uh, for BGP validation, uh, Merchantism as to uh, support uh, to the the, the validated accurate accuracy of incoming interface uh, with uh, the uh, mapping with uh, the prefix. Um, this is about the method consideration. Um, from this figure, you can find the RSP. The RSP is about Internet Service Provider. Uh, the ISP0 uh, may be managed by 
uh, one operator and ISP one, two, and three as neighbor uh, external AS domain may be uh, managed by other operators. Uh, and uh, for the ISP zero, uh, if um, they received some packets from uh, external AS domain, uh, uh, H, uh, S, uh, uh, they need to validate the packets. Uh, so uh, how to validate? Uh, the BGP cell method is uh, proposed to apply the POI policy to the incoming interface. Uh, and uh, binding the POI uh, policy uh, to the interface uh, to validate the receive packets. And uh, the ASBR as validate, uh, validation entity uh, needs to generate, uh, will generate extended prefix table. Uh, and this table have uh, including sub-specific information. Uh, and the uh, ASBR as uh, validation entity uh, performs the sub uh, functionality. Uh, this is an example for multi-homing scenario. Uh, and uh, the prefix uh, ABDF may from ISP100 uh, and ACEF from ISP200. In this scenario, we use policy AS level prefix, uh, you know, prefix originated indicator. So, this policy is based on AS level. So, uh, 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 also we received the same prefix A from um, different uh, um, operators, you know, uh, ISP 100 and ISP 200. But uh, for the POP1, we uh, may only trust uh, the prefix from its real. Uh, the real prefix uh, advertised from the uh, external uh, AS domain. So in this, uh, in this case, uh, the uh, prefix B uh, is not trusted uh, for the uh, pop one. Uh, when the prefix B is received in interface two of uh, pop one, uh, will be denied. And uh, this is about the, the second example. Uh, in this uh, scenario, we use uh, we can use two policies. Uh, one is about AS level, and the second one is about root uh, level POI. Um, so uh, when we use a router POI, um, um, also uh, the uh, pop, pop one, pop two, and pop three nodes uh, uh, through the reflector router can have or generate uh, the same uh, BGP table. Uh, but uh, the, for pop one, when uh, it received the prefix C, uh, the, 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 the package of prefix C uh, will also uh, deny it. Okay, uh, it's different. Uh, for the operation consideration, okay. Uh, so next, uh, next steps, question. Yeah, okay, we will, if you have any question, you can uh, discuss with you. Uh, I think it's better you can indicate the benefit of the new attribute by, co co by configuring with the existing BGP community. Okay, thank you. Yeah, BGP community uh, can be also considered as a uh, one option for the POI. Yeah, okay, thank you. Yeah, okay. So, uh, currently, there are several proposals related to the BGP, uh, BGP, based on the BGP protocol. So, I think we can, we will consolidate, consolidate them after the, after we uh, finish <coughs> the inter AS architecture. So, uh, we will give the last time, last time for the uh, new proposal. Uh, okay. Hello everyone, I'm Gang Ren from Tsinghua University. Uh, my presentation topic is interdomain source address validation <laughs> based on AIS relationship. Okay. Uh, the background is uh, uh, 
uh, several solutions uh, of uh, inter-domain social address validation have been proposed. AI's relationship mainly determines routing uh, exporting role uh, between AI systems. So AI's relationship can be used to generate uh, approximately source address validation roles. We have proposed the, the original idea of a validation scheme based on AI's relationship when we wrote RFC 5210. <coughs> and uh, people have highly uh, higher tolerance for uh, false filtering, but lower uh, acceptance for false blocking. We hope to uh, propose a lightweight scheme with moderate accuracy, convergence speed, and cost compared to existing algorithms. Uh, we all know there are majorly uh, uh, three uh, kind of uh, AIS relationships, uh, provider to customer relation, uh, peer to peer relationship, and uh, sampling to sampling relationships. Uh, here are the uh, exporting role table uh, of major AIS relationships. Uh, AX uh, exports uh, the address prefix of uh, itself, its customers, its providers, its siblings, and uh, its peers to its customers and the siblings as valid prefix. Well, it only exports the address prefix of itself, its customers, and uh, its siblings to its providers and peers as valid prefixes. Uh, <laughs> There are uh, some incidental uh, complex uh, AS relationships. Uh, for example, hybrid relationships. Uh, two AISs have different uh, relationships at different uh, interconnection points. Uh, or partial transit uh, relationships. An AIS offers another AIS transit to its peers and uh, customers, but not providers. Uh, there are many uh, AIS relationship uh, acquisition methods. Uh, firstly, uh, interference algorithms. Uh, these algorithms use various data to interfere AIS relationships. Uh, according to different strategies they use, they can be mainly divided into three types, namely network feature ranking algorithms, uh, combination optimization algorithms, and uh, partial uh, determination algorithms. Uh, the second is a querying approach. The site of uh, AISs which are in P2C uh, or C2P relationship is one AIS can be straight, uh, strictly obtained from ASPA objects in RPKI. Newly proposed ASRA idea uh, can record more complex uh, information of various AI relationships and may help with our, uh, with our scheme. Uh, thirdly, uh, internal uh, announcements. Uh, AIS is running related uh, validation mechanisms uh, de uh, uh, directly declare their relationships uh, to each other. Here are the static uh, architecture. Uh, there are three uh, components. Uh, first is uh, validation rule generation server we call uh, VRGS. VRGS uh, exchanges validation rule with VRGS of other AISs based on uh, AIS uh, relationship uh, exporting rule. VRGS obtain IP addresses uh, prefix uh, corresponding to AIS number from RPKI. Uh, VRGS send the prefix validation rule table uh, to validation routers. The second component is uh, validation router, we call AR, uh, VRR. VRR deploys uh, validation rules to vary source address of packets. VRR receives new rules from VRGS to update the validation rules table. Uh, the third component is the mapping from ASN to IP address prefix owned by the AS. We can use uh, RPKI uh, to support this kind of uh, solution. There are some relative uh, data structure. Uh, first is uh, uh, neighbor AIS table. This table stores like AS number, AIS relationships, and uh, AIS number validation rule site of every uh, neighbor AIS. The second one is uh, prefix validation rule table. This table stores the site of valid source address prefixes. And the third one is the static uh, exporting rule table. This table stores the exporting rule of AIS relationships. Uh, here are the update uh, circumstances. Uh, the first one is change of AIS relationships. When changes occur of the relationships between two AIS, 
VIG access of the two AS boards need to update the ASN uh, or the data rule site in their neighbor AS table. Uh, the second one is change of the prefix of AS. Uh, VRGS needs to uh, regenerate its prefix validation rule table based on the new mapping and deploy the new prefix validation rule table on its corresponding VRR. Uh, and uh, change of the network topology and change of the uh, routing uh, information. Only if AS relationship changed with uh, this changing validation rule uh, record in relative ASs will change. Uh, there are some design considerations on deployability. Uh, firstly, uh, relatively uh, stable. Uh, the update are mainly triggered by uh, uh, change of AS relationships and uh, uh, change of the uh, prefix of AS. Uh, secondly, uh, utilize uh, existing information as much as possible. Uh, we're using uh, the existing information from uh, AS relationship and RPKI. Thirdly, uh, prefer to use and exchange more abstract information. AS number rather than fine-grained IP prefixes are transmitted by the solution. Uh, finally, try to balance accuracy, time, and uh, cost. Uh, for next step, uh, firstly, a new protocol or extension based on BGP4 uh, and the security uh, considerations. Uh, secondly, uh, special processing mechanisms for various uh, incidental complex AS relationships and uh, corner cases. Uh, thirdly, uh, solutions uh, on inaccurate mapping uh, from AS to IP address prefix and the inaccurate uh, information from RPKI. Uh, finally, evaluation modes and metrics that balance deployment uh, overhead and accuracy. Thank you for listening. <coughs> Just one quick question. So in your solution, the, there need one uh, v, VRGS uh, deployed in e, each AS? Uh, yeah, in each AS. And the, you have, uh, your proposed PGP extension is for the communication between the VG, VG, VRGS or between the VRGS and VRR? Uh, yeah, yeah. So it can be a, a test uh, separate uh, uh, protocol or it can be extensioned by uh, PGP, yeah. Yeah, uh, but I think it will be challenging to deploy the actual VRGS in the service network, service provider network to achieve the goal. So uh, we should consider it more uh, carefully. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, uh, yeah. So thank you folks for your time. We have run out of time. I wish we had even more time for discussions, but we can only get so much in each meeting. So thank you very much. Please take your questions, comments, and opinions to the list. So uh, you can after the next week we send the discussion. Please question list. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. So maybe sharing your question. Yeah. So actually I'll uh, just uh, specifically in your comments on the current uh, interdependent architecture draft. 